Okay, now we're going to move on to our next phase, which is beginning to analyze the model for a diagram so we can include this diagram on our board. Um, I had everybody open up their original Phillips Pavilion file, and what we're going to do is just select the surfaces, and it should just be nine surfaces only. Everything else should just be turned off for the sake of we don't need it. And let's go ahead and export this just this information out. And so I'm going to name it the same thing, but at the end, I'm going to do underscore, and I'm going to do analysis, because that's what we're doing. And then I'm going to underscore again, and I'm going to say ISO curves. I'll move it up so everybody can see it. And then hit save. Too fast. <laughs> so it is right here. Now that you exported that, you can close this version of it because we just wanted to export from it. So we don't need this version anymore. So I'm going to close out of it. And I'm going to now open up the exported file, which is which I named uh, Arc2222 Phillips Pavilion Analysis ISO Curves. So now that I've opened that up, it should just be the original surface again with just the nine surfaces, which is what we exported. And now what I'd like to do is do a series of studies using curvature and using curves to study the actual curvature, I should say. So let's create a layer and let's go ISO curves one. Make that the selected layer. And then what I'm going to do is the command called contour. <clears throat> so now that I've done that, um, it's asking to select objects for contouring. I'm essentially just going to select the whole model because we want to analyze everything. And I'm going to press enter. Now it's asking for a base plane or a plane base point, I'm sorry. And so for my first analysis, and you can do it many different ways, my first analysis, I'm just going to choose this point right here. And now it's asking for a direction perpendicular to the plane. And so for now, I'm going to actually just choose this direction, which is the long direction. And now it's asking me the distance between my contours. And it's, right now it says 1. Because this model is at full scale, that means that it would do a line every one foot, which means you'd probably get over 130 lines because this model is 130 feet long. So that's a lot. Let's try and do a simplified version of that. So I'm just going to do five and hit enter and then watch it do the profiles for you. So now I'm going to turn off my surfaces so I can see what it produced. And maybe five was too far apart. Maybe we actually want a one instead. So I'm going to just undo because this is sort of a trial and error process. I'm going to type contour again and just do the exact same process again. So select from the same point. Go in the same direction. Make sure your orthogonal is on. And I'm going to change it back to one. So now it's creating a profile line in that direction every one foot. And you see it created, it's way more dense than it was before because there's, you know, five times the amount of lines. And so now when you take it off the surfaces, now you can actually see a little bit better, you know, the overall form without the surface there. So that's looking pretty nice. I, I like that a lot. So I'm going to actually hold on to that one. So 
I'm going to do one more and then I'm going to have you all do a couple yourselves. So I'm going to just turn that one off and I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to just call it ISO curves two. And it might actually be helpful to put in the information of what, you know, so I might say at, um, at one foot. So maybe for this next one, I want to go at three feet. So that way I, I kind of know how far apart they are. And so this time though, I'm going to create a reference line for myself because I want to go upward. So now I'm going to do contour. So I'm going to select all the objects, type contour, select a base point. I'm going to choose this reference line I created for myself. And then now I'm going to choose the top. And instead of being one, I'm going to make it three, just so they're a little bit more spaced out. And I'm going to hit enter. And let it do its magic. And I'll hide this. And now I've seen it in this way. And you can turn both on at the same time, and it creates like a really nice mesh for yourself. And so I think together these two look really nice. You have an upward direction and a side direction. So to me this is working really well, especially if you do that. Okay. And now I am going to stop the video and ask you all to do a couple more versions of this.